Well, first, let me thank uh, St. Louis Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, Mr. Dick Geyser, uh, for the award, as well as all the ADs on the committee uh, that voted for we. Um, I never started coaching for any awards. I, I coached for the kids, and uh, that kind of paid off. Uh, the kids were all were we, and uh, that is how we went as a family, as uh, Ian said. So, um, this wasn't about me, it was involved for we, and, and I, I get to be up here to do this. My daughter Taylor told me I was uh, built for this, but you can see what I'm built for. I couldn't even not wear my coaching jacket. I, I'm built for coaching. Speeches are really not something that uh, I'm not probably that good at. So anyway, um, I do have a lot of thank yous like everybody to uh, that I want to say. Um, and first and foremost, thank you to Fine Pine University and the athletic department. Coach McKinney, that we have all spoken so highly of, he hired me. Uh, it's a pretty classic moment because he said, Bill, you, you, you've got a lot of energy. Uh, you're really determined. You remind me of myself. What I'm asking you to do is just don't get us in trouble. <laughs> and I said, okay. So I, I think I, uh, I, think I uh, took care of that for him. Um, Maria Buckle, I uh, couldn't, couldn't have had a better uh, athletic director. Um, and I know uh, putting up with me sometimes uh, was a challenge. Probably no different for some of the lead players there. Um, but it was a treat, and uh, uh, you're as good as it gets. That, that's a fact. Uh, Keith Quigley, congratulations. Um, man, I, mean, I figured out quickly as a coach, one thing you should do, uh, if you're going to bring kids in, it's not like you were offering full scholarships here uh, in Division Three. Uh, so getting to know the admissions people uh, seemed to be a big priority for me. Keith was the very best at it, and uh, Keith helped sell uh, a lot of kids. And so Keith, I can only thank you and congrats on uh, your incredible career. Uh, Maria let me let uh, Robin Steiner know. I thank her for all of her patience. She had to put up with Mike Akers. We'll hear about it soon. Um, Andrea Christensen. I mean, some people not here, but uh, Andrea kept kids on the field for us. Uh, I wasn't a big fan, maybe some, you know, it didn't walk it off, it's going to be okay. Uh, Andrea Christensen was our trainer, and uh, she put kids back on the field for us, and quickly, it, it made me pretty happy when that happened. Um, Mel Painfully, uh, little Mel has uh, helped me get the job. He was the one that uh, took me back from St. Louis University. I thought for a while, and I, I coached for 16 years, I thought, uh, after a little step in front of mine, I thought it would be a great idea to be a Division One coach, and uh, that was a terrible mistake, and I was bleeding purple, and uh, uh, Division One just wasn't uh, meant for me. So uh, Mel Pinkley uh, reached out and asked if I'd uh, leave SLU and come to Fun Pond and be a head coach, and, uh, and also uh, spoke with Mr. McKinney, Coach Lee, and said, uh, you got to get this guy hired, which he did. Uh, his uh, right-hand man, Mel Richardson, big Mel. Um, they, they could have been bit better mentors for me uh, in how to be a coach, and uh, especially with a female athlete, which is a totally different uh, coaching experience, in my opinion. Uh, and then John Conway, who I was fortunate enough to coach with for four years at Fon Fon, uh, in my 14 years there, who was just a, uh, an outstanding coach and another mentor that has taught me so much. And, uh, is now retired from as well. And then a quick shout for Tim Miller because he was the voice. One of the things that uh, we did do was get games broadcasted uh, with Tim Miller uh, day, all games, no matter where we went. And Tim is still doing it for Fine Pine, and he was the voice. So um, thank you to the Fine Pine uh, group. Um, next, my mom and dad. Uh, the other day, uh, my grandson, Jacob, uh, we were going down to get some uh, pretzels and beer. <laughs> he's four, he's getting the beer, I'm getting the pretzels. Uh, he told me he could unhook his car seat all by himself. And I said, cool, I can't wait to see this. It's, it's a pain in the butt, pal. Uh, so he tries, he doesn't get it done. I'm watching, and I said, well, may I show you a few things? And he said, yeah, okay. So I show him, and he does it. And of course, you guys probably know what I did after that. I bought him back in and made him do it again. And he got that one, and I buckled him in again, made him do it again. He said, how many times do we have to do this? I said, I don't know yet, but just keep going. Uh, so he, uh, uh, 
I showed him the idea, he did it, uh, and I told him, I said, I, I, Jacob, I think that's really what made me a good coach. I was really good at uh, trying to get people to do something that they had to be able to do quickly uh, and do it without a thought. And uh, he looked at me and he said, uh, well, when you were a kid, Papa, did uh, someone teach you how to coach? I said, wow, good question. You sure right? It was my mother and my father, Mary Ann and Elmer. I can't thank you guys enough um, for being there. Um, I also thank my mom. She, Whenever we did Liz, it was always the umpire or uh, somebody. <laughs> so thank you for that, Mom. Uh, but my mom and dad, uh, they made the trip for Weedy all over the place. Uh, at times, I didn't expect them to be there, like Florida, and there they are in the stands. And you're just going, what are you doing here? We just made a road trip. Okay. So mom and dad, I love you. I, uh, I thank you. Uh, my two daughters, Kayla and Samantha. Um, not many people, uh, collegiate coaches, get to coach their child. But I did, both of them. And uh, it was an incredible process. And um, I can't say how fortunate I was to get to do that. Um, but then to get to experience when they finished playing, they wanted to coach. Well, I, I was a firm believer, believer that more the barrier. Um, and as long as we were all on the same page, we could get plenty done. So I also got to coach with them for many a year. I don't remember how long. Taylor, since I came back for all eight years. So um, it will be something I never forget. And I hope uh, you guys uh, never forget. And uh, they made me better. And one of the things I was adamant about daily was to get better. Our program was to get better. It was kind of like having days off. Days off just meant my competition was going to get better. Wasn't something I was real fond of. The NCAA said you had to have a day off, so we we, we are obliged with that. So, um, but the, the opportunity that they provided for we these kids, uh, as Amy said, navigating through college, it all by itself is a chore, as you all know. Um, and then to get them through softball, and I, we had a good program, and uh, it was um, a challenge also uh, in life. I mean, these guys needed. You not always had the head coach as a female athlete when you have some of the problems that go on with a female. Um, and my daughters handled all of that for me. And, uh, uh, it's irreplaceable. Um, and I will be darned if they didn't turn out to be incredibly good coaches. Um, and good coaches, in my opinion, are good listeners. And they were really good listeners as players. Uh, they weren't the most talented. Uh, they, they, weren't, they weren't as lucky, uh, you know, as they, they weren't born with that, so they had to work hard at it, and uh, being a good listener made them a uh, better player, and it really made them a good coach. I know what you're thinking, wow, you are right under the bus, Scott. Yes. Um, so, again, being a good teacher uh, uh, is a good listener, so thank you both. I love you both. Uh, my two sons, Billy and Blake, that are here, um, wow, uh, thank you for supporting me, of course, and loving me. Uh, especially because I was really never home because, you know, as a coach, you're recruiting, you get games, you're recruiting, you get workouts, you're recruiting, uh, you guys get the idea. Uh, but I do uh, want to say I uh, love you guys, and uh, I hope you enjoyed all those vacations that you keep telling me we never got to go on. I took it to Florida every time we went to Florida, for about six years, eight years, I think mean, that's a vacation. Um, <laughs> uh, JJ, Justin Jurgensmeyer, uh, you could have coached baseball. He graduates from baseball as a big time player, and he could have coached baseball. I don't really know what made him coach softball. Huh. Yeah. Um, your ability to teach uh, was incredible. Uh, and I am proud to have you as my son in law. If you guys haven't put two and two together, I think there was something going on there. When he took a coaching job, I don't know. That, that's not right. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for your time, your efforts. Uh, it was amazing, and it was a great ride. Uh, Justin Arnold, uh, Taylor's husband, thank you for your patience while well, Taylor was never at home as well, uh, because she was recruiting and trying to do everything uh, for me as well. Um, my wife, Mary, um, oh my gosh, uh, I, don't, I can't say enough. Not only did I appreciate and need her support, because I also, I mean, I was a part-time coach, so I worked a full-time job through my 16 years uh, as well. Um, so I, I needed her support, but I also needed her work that she did. Uh, she made t-shirts. I mean, if 
you, you name it. She ate lunches for the kids when we were on the bus. She missed no trips. I hated the bus ride. She looked forward to the bus ride. I don't, I don't understand that. Uh, Fogbon realized that uh, she, her work habits were good. They gave her the Flying Griffin Award. Uh, Marina, excellent work right there and well deserved uh, for someone that appreciates uh, the work habits that she had for all of the kids and we. Um, I will tell you, uh, she is my biggest fan, is and, and still is, I think. Uh, she might not be when this is over. Um, but I, I don't want you guys all to think when you see her going, wow, you were something. Because uh, she, she was, but uh, don't think for a minute she wasn't coaching when we got home. I don't know how many of you coaches out here, you know, one half's uh, trying to help. And uh, boy, uh, there were some times that she even had a strong opinion in reference to uh, my performance maybe for that day. So she was not afraid to grab my ear and straighten me out quickly. And uh, I can only uh, thank her for that. I love you. And uh, almost as, uh, well, probably as much as uh, my last person to talk about, my very good friend, Mike Akers. Um, while Mike's name isn't going to be on the award, um, there would be no award without Mike Akers. Uh, he came on as a coach. Uh, a head coach in his own right through travel ball. Um, he, he didn't even tell his wife he was going to take the job. My wife told her on accident when we were at dinner one time that went over well. Uh, but again, the award uh, should Mike should be up here to have to make a speech as well. But I'm glad to do it because I also know that uh, um, Mike was never about uh, a title. Uh, he didn't care what he was called. Um, Mike, uh, he took care of everything, including keeping me in check, which was a challenge at times. Marie could probably back some of that up, maybe my wife. Um, he just cared about our program. He, he cared about we. And uh, when I say it was we, I mean, my, my uh, the retirement jersey they gave me and doesn't have a number on my front my jersey, that's we on the back. And again, this award is really about all of these kids. I didn't do anything. Mike didn't do anything. We had a few opinions and ideas, and, and uh, they worked. And uh, we're, I'm glad to be here. So um, um, the other thing that Mike did too uh, was make sure that we succeeded off the field. And we were one of the best programs in the country. We were number one in the country one year, number two in the country one year. Uh, we only finished uh, in our eight years. We only finished out of the top ten once. I think Mike. Is that right? Um, so Mike made sure we were doing things well on the field and off the field. He was never afraid to come to practice and go build these kids. Uh, let's have a hot dog party. Let's let's go. Uh, let's uh, don't work out today. Let's have a mental break and go. And man, I mean, a challenge for a guy like me. I, I'm a big fan on days off, as you already know. So, um, Mike, I thank you, my friend. Um, I thank you for all the memories, and uh, the memories will be with us for a long, long time. And, they're the greatest, and I can't thank uh, your wife and your family as well for all their sacrifices. So, uh, in closing, to all of we, uh, all of our fans, I mean, we had games broadcasted at 300 people listening to our game. It's the cool part about technology. You're thinking that you're spending this money. And we've got people from all over, I mean, teams that we had played and we traveled, and, and their fans, I guess, liked us. I don't know. Uh, so all the fans, uh, Danny, uh, congratulations. Uh, it's an honor to uh, be in here with you. Um, and uh, I thank everybody for all of your guys' time. And uh, go we.